Hi, and welcome back to THU TV. Hopefully you guys are having a good time. I'd love to hear your thoughts on how these interviews are going. I think they're a lot of fun for me, uh, but I'd like to hear what you guys think. Uh, and I also want to remind you guys again that uh, you should be able to get the video on demand stuff from THU TV, uh, which is available at trojan-unicorn.com slash TV. Uh, there's a lot of great content. If you guys want to see some of the uh, actual talks that are happening at THU TV, that's where you get that information. We're here with Manny. Uh, how are you? Doing great. Thanks yes, for having me. Absolutely. Uh, uh, so this is your first THU, is that yes, correct? Yes, and it's been phenomenal. Yeah. So uh, the experience is uh, great. Yeah. And uh, so, so let, let's, t let's tell the, the viewers a little bit about yourself. Okay. Uh, my name is Manny Carrasco. I also mm -hmm. go by Manu. Okay. All my artwork is signed by Manu, so people sometimes will come up to me and say, Hey, Manu. So I, I'll respond to both. Okay. Uh, I'm a concept artist. Yeah. Uh, slash animator. Yeah. Started off as an animator in the back I guess in the early 90s I was pretty lucky to yeah traditionally animate okay. uh, went into video games into concept was part of a concept art studio okay and uh, that led to uh, a lot of things my career has been quite a wild path and okay. now I'm a co-owner with some of my older concept art colleagues of a uh, of a nonprofit organization called Expedition Art. Okay. Uh, well, so when you when you uh, uh, did your animation, you where, where were you living when, at that time? You know, I was uh, living in Odessa, Texas. Odessa, West Texas. Yes. Yeah, I, went I know for, where that you is. Odessa, Friday yeah. Night Lights. Yeah. Um, I was living in Odessa uh, through my childhood and growing up in school and high school. I was mentored okay. by some professional artists. So when it came time to graduate. I, instead of going to school, I got kind of thrown into the shark tank and uh, learned on the job. Okay. So I was pretty lucky working with a fellow named Scott Shaw, who's a, uh, an amazing cartoonist and mentored by Sergio Aragonis, uh -huh. mad magazine okay. artist. Wow, that's amazing. So w what kind of animation were you doing? Were you doing traditional well, uh, yes, I, animation? Yes, uh, you know, I started off uh, traditionally, you know, when I moved to Los Angeles, it was culture shock to begin with. Okay. Uh, going from West, you know, West Texas to Los Angeles was oh, yeah. quite a different jungle. But um, everything from, you know, I, I was pretty young. Okay. So storyboard cleanup, uh, storyboard cl uh, coloring. Okay. And what uh, around what time was this when you moved to? to uh, I want to say probably ninety one. Okay. okay. Give or take. Yeah. Um, so I don't this think this is really before anything was really digital that much. At this it, point. it was no digital. Right, in right, fact, right. yeah. In fact, uh, I was pretty lucky. We, uh, I went to Los Angeles. I stayed there for quite some time, and then the, just the big city got to me. Mm -hmm. uh, being really young, I kind of threw in the towel and left. Didn't okay. tell anybody, and uh, arrived back at my parents' place. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, got my stuff together. Uh, got a lot of, you know, people telling me, you know, don't give up and don't worry about this. And even though I felt like a complete failure, like I let a lot of people down. Right. But it was it was a good journey, and it was a one of the greatest educations that I could have asked for. Right. Not the right way to take it. Okay. But, you know, it was the road Sometimes that I was Sometimes the getting. hard lessons are the good lessons, right? I, I, I completely agree. Yeah. yeah. I, left, uh, I left there and went back to Odessa, and I was lucky enough to get a job at an ad agency. Okay. Uh, the ad agency that I was working for was doing some animation with an animation studio in Austin. Okay. And then my uh, boss had told the animation studio owner of me okay. and what I had done, so they nabbed me. Oh, they grabbed you. They grabbed okay. me. So you moved from Odessa to Austin. To Austin, yeah. And then there, uh, worked on a couple of kids' animation programs with some uh, veteran animators from Don Bluth Studios. Okay. So I was really excited to learn more. Mm -hmm. More about, you know, there's a big difference with the Saturday morning animation and the feature yes. animation. So I got to learn a lot of feature animation. Oh, that's okay. So, that's really cool. Yeah, and what, then, kind of, what kind of stuff were you doing in the future animation? Okay, world? we uh, ended up working on Space Jam. Oh, right. You know, uh, that, was, that was really neat for me because uh, growing up loving Bugs Bunny and all of a sudden you're working on Bugs Bunny. Uh huh. Not in the same context that you're used to with right, right, Tex right. Avery or Chuck Jones, but it was Bugs Bunny mm -hmm. with Michael Jordan. But, yep. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> that led to uh, us working on uh, various uh, theater releases. Prince of Egypt, 
Oh right, okay. Anastasia. So you were you the, so you worked like on Prince of Egypt. That's a DreamWorks film. The DreamWorks, but, yeah. But, but you were still in Austin. When I was you uh, both both okay. places. We went from Austin to I, w I, I was sent there for a while. Okay. I worked at DreamWorks for a bit, and uh, it was you know quite an experience. Okay. Uh, but a lot of movies: Anastasia, Quest for Camelot, right. Prince of Egypt. I can't think off the top of my head, you know, other... And what were you doing? Were you doing uh, traditional animation? Yeah, still? traditional. Okay. So I was really lucky. Um, I felt that I just landed at a, at a time where, you know, animators now, it's all mostly all digital, right? Right. Um, so it was nice to experience, you know, Glenn Keane being one of my absolute heroes growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, it was nice to experience working on paper and all the... Uh, the correct way to do it because as a kid you don't know any better and right. you do these little spaceship wars on note yeah. pads and you flip it and you wonder why you run out of paper and you <laughs> finish the the war so you continue on to another notepad right. so it was it was quite a you know quite a nice uh kind of nice route to to get yeah well i think that's that's really awesome that we still had obviously a lot of that that uh, uh, that fund foundation in traditional animation, mm -hmm. right? A lot of people need to understand that. Yeah. Uh, did so? Did you actually move to, to digital animation at some point too? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, the you know the the traditional animation sort of hit bottom a little bit. You know, we had some guys from Lion King. I remember that had worked at Disney, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, work was was not as as good as it was before. So. I had to. I had to move on. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily enough, up the street from where the studio was located, we had a, a video game company company there called Acclaim. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. They did the first Turok, the right. dinosaur hunter. Right. And I came in at the tail end of that. Okay. And I I got hired on the basis of my traditional animation. Okay. The guy said, "No, your your fundamentals and your basics are there. We can make you go into the 3D realm pretty easy." So I got thrown into Power Animator and. Oh, and, and Max. Alias Wayfriend uh, yeah, and Max, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> what, tell us about this, there must have been some struggle. Yes, like and I, I'll tell you what I did. I yeah. told, in my talk yesterday, I talked about, uh, you know, they, they sat me down and they gave me like a month of teaching me how to animate with keyframes and the skeleton of the, you mm -hmm. know, in, in the computer. And I remember um, I wasn't the modeler, so I would be handed, for example, I'd get handed one of Turok's enemies or something, and mm -hmm. I would... Uh, use a dry erase marker to <laughs> to draw my screen, the key poses, and then pose that character into that. Wow. Erase it, go to the next one. Of course, in 3D, you're looking at the camera being all around you, right? right. So I'm animating for a single frame. On, a single, on, a, on a single flat. So right. then I had, to, I had to turn the, the character around and then fix what I needed to fix. But that was my, that, you know, that was uh, the way I started. And, and, and just, the, it was quite a bit, the, just the, the handles of the, you know, the sure. skeleton. But I think that's a brilliant way because you're like, you're, you're overlaying what you need to do. I, I've heard of some some traditional animators who went to 3D. I'm not the only. But when they when they tried to animate a character moving forward, they would scale them up. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, and it, it worked. Like, Wait, it moves and this, it yeah. can actually yeah. move in the right direction. It worked. Uh, no, you know, at the point that at, at that time there was no squash and stretch, right, in right. the skeletons. So uh, I had to make do with what I had. Right. But it, it worked. I think, um, you know, I ended up uh, becoming a concept artist during one of the one of the uh, one of the games. Okay. Because uh, the, just the concepts that were coming in, I thought they weren't bad, but I thought we could add to this. So I started sort of drawing on the side, and uh, I, I always thought I was going to be a comic book artist. Really? Growing up, yeah, I never thought I'd be in animation, and uh, so I would fix things and hand them back, and they liked it more, and. Before you know it, they're handing me all of the characters, and I'm redoing all the characters. Redoing all the characters. So now, like, I have a schedule that's just loaded with, with just concepting. And then right. they said, you know what? Just focus on these concepts. And now. this was still at a claim, right? This is still at a claim. Right. Yeah, I think this was like the third Turok or something. Second okay. Turok, uh, I believe. I animated on the second Turok, and I can't remember if the third Turok I was a concept artist. There Interesting. Or not. Yeah. And, and at the time, there wasn't really a concept department. Uh, per se, on the in the companies, if I remember right, okay, not at Acclaim at least. So uh, uh, another friend of mine, uh, by the name of David Levy, who's here also as a guest. Oh, I teacher. know David. Yeah, no David. Yeah, yeah. David and I worked. I worked with David at his very first job in, 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 in when he moved to Austin. 
Oh, really? So we just talked about it right a while ago. I guess it's 18 years ago. Oh, wow. So. <laughs> yeah, David and I are good friends. He and I worked together on Tron Legacy, actually. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, guy. we, you know, David... Uh, yeah, I, I remember he was in Austin as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, and that's where I met David 18 years ago. Okay. Uh, he came in, and then uh, we the concepting started, and, yep. you know, we just, we, uh, another guy named Thierry Doison mm -hmm. was there, and we discovered Sparth, and all the different, you know, digital artists and mm -hmm. the forums were new back then. And yeah, yeah. So everybody's exchanging all this, all this information and we became the first art department or concept department there at Acclaim. Okay, that's so, you know, yeah. so. Well, that's cool. So wh where, did, where did it go from there? Well, it went from there. Let's see, uh, we started, uh, Acclaim went belly up. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. bad. Yeah. I had to keep, you know, the, I think the bank people kept feeding my fish. I had an aquarium there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they wouldn't let us in. And um, oh wow, they literally oh, just closed the doors. Yeah, literally. They, you know, we couldn't get anything. I didn't have my at that time. The tower had it. You know, there was no thumb drives or whatever. Right, right. I guess it was external drives. But all my work was stuck in there, and nobody's got work. And I ended up finding some jobs because people knew me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think David left. He was smart. He read the writing on the wall. Yeah. I stayed there to the very end, but um, I ended up getting some jobs. Uh, I believe the comic book artist, Joe Mad, mm -hmm. Joe Mad Herrera. Um, I sent my portfolio in, people, you know, it, it was, Austin was small enough at that time, the community, that people knew each other. Right. And I was like, well, this is all I have. Uh, my, my stuff is at a claim, right. locked up. And they were like, well, we'll hire you. And I got, I worked as a freelance mostly. Okay. NC Soft, Ubisoft. Right. Uh, and then we started Steambot Studios. Okay. And, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that was a whole different journey, I would say. Yeah. You know? Well, can you tell a little bit about the journey? Sure. I mean, uh, myself and David and Thierry are very close, mm -hmm. We're very best friends. Uh, he, David, had moved with, along with Thierry to Montreal, I believe, and they actually officially started Steambot out there. Okay. Um, I became myself and our producer at Acclaim, who's right. our friend of ours, also Christy Tipton, became a Steambot Studios US. Ah. David moved to Los Angeles, right. so he was part of, of us. Yep. So Steambot was Montreal, Austin, and Los Angeles. But just a few people scattered. Mm -hmm. those yeah, and we right. took on a lot of contracts and a lot of work. And, and then things happened, and we moved on. Okay. Uh, I was loyal to David because he's my friend and like a brother to me. And right. Thierry had left early on, so we kind of disbanded mm -hmm. and that led to hard times yeah <laughs> i mean you know you know david and i'm not sure if you knew david when he was with part of steambot or not but right. uh it was it was tough it was yeah. a tough tough thing that you put so much effort into things and they don't happen to work but yeah. out of all that fire new growth happens yeah of course so um yeah, and he survived. And he, he survived. survived. I've survived. <laughs> Christy, Thierry, we all, right. we've all moved. But uh, that led to some amazing conversations between David and I. Okay. Calling David one day and saying, David was busy, whether mm -hmm. it was with Tron or yeah, I Prometheus, yeah. I can't remember. But, uh, I think I was, Tron was one of his first ones that he worked okay, on. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure exactly movie-wise for David when this, these events happened, but I found myself a little lost. I got some some work some freelance work and then I got hired by a studio that I felt uh, they pay really well but my growth as, a, as an artist was just like plummeting right and um, David and I stayed in contact we all did mm -hmm. and then I'm an outdoor person yeah uh, uh, I have a lot of you know my upbringing and the things that I do for fun my hob hobbies are unique I'm a, a, uh, I'm a falconer. Falconer, yes. Yeah, I train. You love well, birds, raptors? Raptors. I'm a raptor nut since the right. fourth grade. A book called My Side of the Mountain. That was read to us, and that I, that it's changed amazing. my life. And so you have, a, you have falcons? I have, I have a hawk. Yeah, I have, I have I've hawk. had hawks. Yeah, I've been doing this for over 20 years now, I believe. Right. And um, uh, I've always loved animals. Sure. You know, a mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom uh -huh. as a kid and all the documentaries on lions and things just got me that helped build who i was as an animator right as well and as an artist so um well your art is very much about nature in a lot of now ways. it is yeah yeah now it is and, and and that's been my therapy 
when when our studio went belly up, mm-hmm. our personal studio, uh, I turned to back to nature. Right. I turned back to, uh, you know, if it wasn't for falconry, I would have gone nuts. My really? hawk was my therapist. Wow. So nature and uh, conversations with David are like, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do, David. You know, uh, I, I turned to hiking to being outdoors and I noticed I was drawing more outside. Right. You know, again, paying attention to animals, to trees, to yeah. rocks, to environments. And I said, we should start a blog. I understand, and, yeah. And that blog led to other things and to forming this nonprofit that we have. So tell me a little about the blog and about your nonprofit. Okay. The blog, the blog um, first of all, you know, I, the idea was, I said, you know what? I think this is, and this was just more therapeutic for myself. You know, David was busy with Prometheus or Tron. I can't remember which one, yeah. to be honest. But um, uh, I thought, I'm going to start a blog where I write about going back outside and drawing. Right. Uh, you know, not necessarily, well, I mean, it could be plein air painting. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as, as, you know, for me, it was just observing and drawing creeks and drawing great horned owls when you find them, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. And uh, I said, I'm gonna st- let's start this blog and we'll review uh, hiking shoes and backpacks and uh, which is the best sketchbook to take outside and, right. you know, what little kits do we make to go outside and... Um, they said, "Yeah, let, let, let's do that. Let's call it. Let's call it." And we're sitting there, David and I, changing names, and mm-hmm. let's call it uh, Art Explorers. So we were Art Explorers for a bit. So we, you know, that's what we were calling the blog. Mm-hmm. A couple of months later, uh, the Noman School, uh, one of the one of our friends that was working at Noman School, uh, had a friend that was working at a nature center in Los Angeles. Okay, and they were having some problems with some marine life. Mm-hmm. Um, I got the call from uh, this friend of ours, and he said, uh, you're sort of the animal guy. Everybody, because I post a lot of craziness when I'm out in Africa or when I'm out in with my bird or whatever it may be. Right. And he says, and, and we're trying to help this, this center, and everybody thought about you, so can you help us put this together maybe through Art Explorers? Right. Which people thought it was, you know... People couldn't, at first, Art Explorers, they didn't know if Art Explorers was a new studio since Steambot had oh, right. gone down. They so thought people, it was just Yeah, your, it's your, Thierry, Christy, right. David Levy, myself. Right. It's, an, it's a concept art studio. Right. And uh, I kind of explained to him what it was. Uh, we uh, gathered as many artists as we could mm-hmm. to help for this, this cause. And David did a small film. And um, we reached our our colleagues to, for this uh, event, and it was put on. We called it Animal, I believe, mm-hmm. and it was put on by Noman and Art Explorers. Mm-hmm. And uh, we raised some money for the for the marine problems that they were having. I believe it was with baby seals and stuff. I couldn't, I can't okay. remember exactly. And um, we we realized that we sort of had something, you know. We as we talked about it, uh, Terrell Whitlatch joined us. Huh. Uh, Aaron Blaze okay. joined us. Uh, recently, Ian McKegg, oh, yeah. and um, we had this this group of of, of artists that are well respected and mm-hmm. and love nature and love you know it's all kind of like minds. Right. Not to say that other artists don't, but right you know, um, we couldn't keep Art Explorers because I think it was uh, it was taken when okay. we tried to take the name for our, and it was like I, th- I think it was a uh, older ladies that uh, you know quilt or okay. something so we couldn't take so we we, we became expedition art expedition and then art. and then le- legitimately uh our producer and the brain of our That's of our whole thing, thing yeah. took took our name and became a, a, an official 501c3 which is a, um, a non profit mm-hmm. and so through this non profit obviously you're still writing blogs on there as well right yes we are yeah we need to be a, now we're not on you know under art explorers we had to change the whole blog sure. to expedition art and we've linked in we got our website and and some of the projects that, that I've worked on. And but you also raise money in this area. Yes, uh, yes we do. Um, so w- where I've kind of caught the attention, I think, of people, uh, everything, you know, like I said, you know, the, out of this fire that happened, new growth happened. Mm-hmm. And 
more growth and more growth, and all of a sudden there's this forest, which is expedition art. Right. Um, I go to, uh, my brother-in-law knows how much I love animals, and uh, he is a real estate uh, businessman in, in Austin, and he called me one time for lunch and said, hey, so I have this idea, and I thought of you immediately. Um, how would you like to go work with rhinos in Africa, in Zimbabwe? Wow. And, I mean, that's, that's a given. You right. know, growing up in, at the ranch with animals and always observing animals and tracking and everything that I've done, that was a no-brainer. Right. So we went, uh, not officially as Expedition Art, but I went to volunteer out there mm -hmm. and um, met some people out there, a couple of veterinarians that have their own nonprofit in Zimbabwe. Right. Zimbabwe isn't the richest country in the world. Nope. Um, they, uh, they used to work for the government, and when they lost their jobs, uh, uh, this is what I remember, when they lost their jobs, they, wanted, they felt the responsibility to what they were doing before. Right. So they went ahead and started the nonprofit and continued the work with the rhinos to... Mm -hmm because of the poaching that goes on. Right, of course. Most of the rhinos have been moved into national parks. And what we do there is we go there with them mm -hmm. and dehorn them. Right. Which is a whole <coughs> a whole different, you know, something. It was all new to me, all exciting, of course, because, mm -hmm. and, and I didn't go alone. My brother ended up going with me and my sister. And um, we went to the first rhino dehorning and then, I thought more about how we could help through Expedition Art and mm -hmm. and not just exp not just the not just the Rhino um, organization there, but just in general, right? Mm -hmm. Using I found that using art as an educational tool was phenomenal. Right, like it's louder than words. Yeah, that's so, so great. Um, well, I love the fact that you've been able to take art and you've been able to take it and and, and channel it in. Is there other people that you're looking for to try to? Oh yes, yes, yes. What's what's happened now is uh, we've been to I, I've been to Zimbabwe a couple of more times. Uh, one time working with dogs in villages to mm -hmm. stop the spread of um, parvo and rabies into um, the wildlife there, which mm -hmm. are this I, I, I guess the spotted the African wi wild dogs mm -hmm. and the and the lions. So uh, we go and do all these vaccination clinics and and uh, spay and neuter. Mm -hmm. things but I've been back for the rhino stuff again this time I did go as expedition art and we did take some things to the rangers and um, we got uh, uh, an event that was held in at the Sundance festival and we raised twenty five thousand dollars for for um, rhino conservation efforts awesome and um, we were just put a book together okay and um, it's in print now it's being worked out mm -hmm. uh, I reached out to more colleagues yep um, between myself, Aaron Blaze, David, Thierry, Ian McKegg, mm -hmm. um, that sort of made us a little bit more legit. And people like Bobby Chu, Carla Ortiz, uh, Alexi. Yeah. Uh, just the, the amount of the response that we got, uh, Claire Wendling. Yeah. Uh, our, our covers uh, drawn by Kim Jung G. Oh, wow, really? And uh, we've, our first project is, uh, we call it In Danger. Okay. It's 100 threatened and endangered species. Okay. And uh, 58 artists from, I can't remember how many different countries. Right. And uh, it's being published by Imagination International, which is the company that Terrell works for. Right. So, uh, and as far as other artists joining, um, yes, expeditionart.org. There you go. That's what I was going to ask you specifically. Send, send art. I mean, the, it, it's amazing now that we're sort of getting our name out there more mm -hmm. and people are realizing what we're doing. People want to contribute more. Right. We want to be fair. The proceeds do go to uh, different uh, other nonprofits that we pick, we select. Right. Uh, this book is going to savingspecies.org. Okay. Which buy land and connect these corridors of, uh, this speci specifically this project is for orangutans and tigers in Sumatra. Okay. And uh, I may be going there in January. Oh, wonderful. To, to speak with them. Well, this is so cool that you're able to take two of your passions and put them together and travel the world to do it. Exactly, and it's open doors. I yeah. mean, both falconry and um, both falconry and um, uh, art yeah. have just sort of blended together and then the wildlife. So it's come full circle. Right. Really, strangely. 
Well, great. Uh, so we have to cut the time short, unfortunately, but I would love to keep talking to you. We have all week, so it's gonna we, we're going to have a great time together, yeah, I'm sure. sure. No problem, uh, no problem. But Thank thanks you. so much for doing this, man. Yeah, well, thank you for it. having me. Thank you for having me.